presents One Run. First seen in 1976 on TV sets all over the country, this ad is surely a cultural artifact. Two apparent foreigners, one black, one white, speaking one language. That ain't no, man. This mashup of culture and basketball is partly why I've spent a good portion of my life writing about the Philippines. Wow! Watch that, man! Watch that, man! Mess it up? Yeah! For this episode, I'm taking you with me back to where it all started to catch up with the team that became like family to me. Um, I thought you were Coach Tim's son. No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like, okay, Jeff, this is your job. You have to have the team together. I was uh, green behind my ears. I probably negotiated one of the worst franchise agreements in PBA history. Basketball is like this picture of the nation. There's all these little subcultures, and so it was just fascinating. And cut! Saying the Philippines is obsessed with basketball is an understatement. People will do just about anything for a game. Professional or makeshift, courts are built on streets, small islands. I'm here to find the stories that make Pinoy ball unlike anything else in the world. I am Rafe Bartholomew and this is Hoop Nation. I am not L.A. Tenorio. I am not Joe Devines. I am not Sunny Toss. Slick and shiny, this Alaska ad is so far evolved from the first one we watched, but its spirit is the same. We are Alaska Aces! The team is an outlier in the PBA. For as long as they've been in the league, Alaska has emphasized sportsmanship and winning the right way. Success matters and championships are always the goal, but values like teamwork and honesty are non-negotiable and they are not afraid to show it. When I was writing my first book, the Alaska Aces let me tag along to chronicle their lives during the 2007 PBA Fiesta Conference when they won the championship. There was a series played by men. I was met with such warmth and almost felt like an adopted son that it was no surprise I extended my stay in the Philippines two years after that. It's time for me to catch up with the guys I hung out with back then, the guys who helped me grow to love this country and its basketball culture. What was nice was right at the beginning, again, our reaction was like, Who's that white guy? Is that practice? What's he? Why is he here? Because normally Coach Tim won't just allow anyone, right? So you made it hard for us to make fun of you. So <laughs> I thought you were Coach Tim's son. No. <laughs> Not the only one. Are most teams? Do they have that many characters on them? I mean, if you think about, it, you had Willie, uh, Poch, you know, Ferrios. Uh, I mean, you had some some funny guys back then. <laughs> I, I'd like to to say that that was a special group of guys. I, I really mean that. Not only did we get along on the court, but we got, a, we got along off the court, and that helped. And if you guys can be close off the court, you know, and find some way to, to get together off the court, it really helps you on the court, and that's exactly what happened. I could be yelling at Tony, I could yell at Willie, or I could yell at Potts for whatever reason, and, 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 I, and I could take it back if they, if, if, if they feel like they need to yell at me. So that's really part of what being a team is, right? Big brother, little brother, that, that's really part of it. You know, it wasn't like, okay, Jeff, this is your job. And you, have, you know, it was really, you have to have the team together. I learned obviously a lot from Jeff because when I came from Shell, I noticed the culture at Shell was a little different. And I mean, the first thing I noticed when I got to Alaska was everyone shook each other's hand the minute they got to practice. And I thought that was like, wow, this is awesome. Like, I've noticed that that tradition or that habit has carried on till now. And as you look at sort of like the, your whole career over the years, is there, you know, what, what moments stand out? The high point is the fact that I've been a part of this organization now for 12 years. I think it's hard to find players that are going to be a one team or two team. At the same time, you know, low points, you know, we were that team that were up 3-0 and we lost. That would have to be one of my lowest points as a, as a basketball player. I mean, I could, didn't sleep for like 10 days straight. I mean, 
we, we have high standards here, and then Bus Fred really does a just an awesome job of making us just remember what are we competing for. And you know, his tagline is, you know, good enough never is. So if we come in second, we come in tenth. It's it's you know, you still didn't win it. So again, our goal is every conference to compete, get to the final, give ourselves a chance to make it. You know you're part of the Alaska family, so anytime, I'm fighting, fighting. you know, I'm, I'm proud of Just that. Just come home. <laughs> <laughs>After catching up with the guys, I head off to meet the man behind it all. Fred Oitengsu is the president and CEO of the Alaska Milk Corporation, which introduced Alaska to the PBA in 1986. To our fans, we love you. Great support. We couldn't have done it without you. And to our team, you might Fred's efforts are seen not only in the boardroom and on the court, he also represented the country as a swimmer in the 1981 Southeast Asian Games and has brought the Ironman triathlon race to the Philippines. He practices what he preaches, and he lives the way he encourages Alaska's players to follow. I didn't grow up playing basketball. I, you know, I was a swimmer, but being 23 years old and, and having the chance to start a sports franchise was, was really exciting. Tommy Manotok, who was the deputy commissioner mm -hmm. at that time, Tommy was wise beyond his years mm -hmm. and I was green behind my <laughs> ears. And, you know, it was an interesting situation because I probably negotiated one of the worst franchise agreements in PBA <laughs> history. I have to say I was probably the youngest member of the franchise. Right. And we made a lot of mistakes, but I think it was that persistence of wanting to be successful but also wanting to have purpose. The Aces began as the Alaska Milkmen, and since then the brand name synonymous with milk has also become associated with basketball. With 14 championships to date, the Aces have built a tradition of excellence as regular title contenders in the PBA. I'm fiercely competitive, I uh, hate to lose. In fact, I'm, I, I asked the question, do you hate to lose more than you like to win? Mm -hmm. And in my case, I think I hate to lose more. And I went through a difficult period of changing a lot of coaches because mm -hmm. I just didn't find a coach that hated to lose as much as mm -hmm. I did. Tim came on board mm -hmm. um, and, and had a long run with us, but that was the first part of establishing a work ethic of wanting to, to become mm -hmm. better. The PBA has been around since 1975. It's the oldest professional basketball league in Asia. Through the years, though, the league has faced its share of challenges. Among the owners, Fred is known for voicing his beliefs, even when they're unpopular. You know, there's been a lot of challenges that the league has faced, mm -hmm. and part of that we saw, I think, unethical behaviors in terms of the Phil Shams that came in. Uh, then we had a lot of issues with the salary cap. Mm -hmm. And to me, if you have rules, you play by the rules. And I would rather, um, you know, we win with integrity or we don't play at all. Yeah. We'll never compromise our integrity yeah. in the pursuit of, of victory. It just means we have to work harder. Yeah. Um, Alaska's never been the most talented team right. in the PBA, even with our great success with the, mm -hmm. with the Grand Slam. And in every championship, we've gone up against players and teams that have been, in my opinion, mm -hmm. more talented. I think what we have been during our successful championships is we've been a better team. When, uh, when we dropped that, that finals after a 3-0 yeah. lead, I made the joke is we are the best second place team in the PBA. Right. And I said, but that's not what we signed up for. Yeah. We, you know, we wanted to be and we still desire to be the best team. Your mind will quit mm -hmm. before your body. Yeah. So you think it's, you're tired? It's only because you're, you're mentally weak. And so I'm just going to challenge back, you know, if you want to play, you better start working harder. Certainly people have asked me when I was following the team, are you the Alaska Milk Boy? And what's, what's the story behind the Alaska Milk Boy? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of an urban myth because, uh -huh. I, you know, I've been asked is, is <laughs> uh, am I the Alaska Boy? And first of all, the, the boy, yes. the drawing on the can, is, is a drawing, is, yeah. is not anyone <laughs> in particular. But my younger brother did appear in a TV commercial <laughs> with Cisco Oliver yes. 
back in the in the 70s, and that's what they're referencing, yeah. really. So it's an urban myth that gets yeah. uh, repeated and maybe passed down from from generation to generation, and we just we we run with it. Still, when I walk around the streets, people will yell out, "Alaska man!" Yeah, well, that's uh, it's the commercial. Yeah, it's the commercial, and imagine that's 40 plus years down the road, and it's. You know, it's Alaska man, it's Galing Mo man with that twang. <laughs> yeah. And of course our tagline, Wala Parinta Talos Alaska. So yeah. it's nice to have that as a tagline uh, for your basketball team as well. Galing Galing man, walang tatalo. Now this guy is sort of my doppelganger. Thank you, coach. Kuya Rafe. <laughs> uh, you were my first Kuya here. <laughs> when I first came here, he guided me to the best chicken in a silent town and taught me some of my first Tagalog words. Born in the US, but with undeniable Pusong Pinoy, Alex is now the coach for the Alaska Aces. I can't wait to catch up with him. At that point when I met you, I was still positive that whatever I did in life, I would never coach. Mm. I said that my whole life. I don't know what I'm going to do after basketball, but I know one thing, I will never coach. Alex Compton has had an exciting career in the NBA, the PBL, and the PBA since first coming to Manila to play in 1998. As point guard for the Manila Metro Stars, he was the NBA's MVP in 1999, and he helped lead the team to a championship in 2001. When I was just a confused Kano, wondering how to get by in a new country, Alex showed me how to embrace the Philippines. Import na local. <laughs> Ford Philippines, American parts made in the Philippines. Technically, I think I'm the only player that was ever allowed to play having only been born here. Yeah. To think of it, my life in basketball here being anything but a blessing and a gift, uh, I think would be uh, foolishness and entitlement. It, it just, it was a gift. Playing ball in the Philippines brought Alex from one adventure to the next. Alex became head coach in 2014, and he's been leading the Aces to this day. I love the PBA. I coach in the PBA now. Still, if I could have chosen to come straight to the PBA or to go straight to the NBA now, looking back, I'd still have gone to the NBA because it allowed me to see the country to understand the Filipinos better and to understand that, you know, life in Sauk Sargent is nothing like life in Pangasinan. It's like basketball is like this picture of the nation. There's all these little subcultures in one big culture, but they're united. And they're united by the game in basketball. And so you know that, you've been around. And so it was just fascinating. The, the passion in the country for the game is unparalleled. I got to cover FIBA Asia on TV and one of the guys from FIBA told me this is one of four countries in the world where basketball is the number one sport, one of four. This is the most populated, this is the most passionate. That passion is huge, it's, it's, it's almost uncontainable, uh, it's contagious, and so people grow up around that. I mean, go to a town plaza and watch a championship game. Now you couple to the fact that, let's admit the unfortunate truth, a lot of Filipinos live, the majority of Filipinos actually live below the poverty line. So you're talking about people that have to overcome adversity every day and hunger every day. And they have to overcome these things driven by their passion, a lot of times not by the food in their stomach because there's not enough. And so, so you've got all these factors that come together that, that create this desire and this pursuit and this toughness that I do think you're onto something that create players like that, that, you know what? They're gonna die for the ball. What is that in the gallop? Go ahead, tell me. I know. Come on, come on, you can do it. Mama matay sa bola. Okay, he's close, not bad. Mama matay sa bola. Yeah, yeah. So, but they're guys that are gonna... Yeah, they're, they're, they're ready to die for the ball. <laughs> they're, they're not afraid. And, and, I mean, I think guys are, you know, all the environment, Basketball doesn't exist in a vacuum, it exists in a cultural context.
Every year, Alaska holds its power camps to encourage kids to participate in sports. It attracts thousands of campers from all over the country and features professional basketball players and coaches as mentors. It also has the distinction of being partners with the Junior NBA, which is the official youth participation program of the NBA. One of the stars who emerged from power camp is Kai Soto, the 6'11 son of former Alaska player Irvin Soto. I sit down with Kai to see what drives him so early in his career and with the nation's hoop dreams already on his back. I started playing basketball at uh, four years old. Wow. Because I saw my dad playing basketball, I thought it was a beautiful sport. Pala tong basketball. Mm. Parang mm. Proud na proud ako, kahit, kahit lang, exciting. I was proud of it, even with two points, even with one block. Proud na proud ako kay daddy, parang sobrang saya ko na, oh, galing, parang uh -huh. ganun. Nung mga Alaska games, ano, galing, lakas ng team nila. Uh -huh. Tapos, lagi akong sinasama ni daddy sa practice. Uh -huh. So, nakikita ko sila lahat. Minsan nakikipag one -on one pa ako, kala uh -huh. Cyrus Baguio dati. <laughs> Kulit nga, italo ako lagi. <laughs> Tapos yun, ano, parang masaya lang ako na nakikita kong naglalaro ng basketball. Uh -huh. Kai Soto caught media attention when he started growing incredibly tall at such a young age. He talks about how this affected his life. I started at 6 feet, and I went to 6'11 in Rami. three years. It's fast, no? That's it. There's a lot of opportunity to play a lot. I'm always playing. I'm always telling my dad to play. I'm always playing. Because that's it. It's a big advantage. I told my dad to play. Kahit mahina man kalaban mo, kahit malakas, dapat seryoso pa rin. Mm. Dahil pag kumahina yung kalaban, tas petics ka, parang uh, di ba, di, unfair naman, wala namang respeto yun uh, sa kalaban. Minsan, ano, nag, uh, ano nag, naglalaro ba kayo ng daddy mo ng one-on-one? -on -one? Mm. <laughs> siguro mga 12 years old uh, na, nung sabi niya na, so, ano, kaya mo na maglaro. Siguro halos, uh, ano, parehong, ano, uh, mga 6'5 na ako ng, na, uh, so close. Sabi niya, oh, ano, kaya mo na akong talunin? Sabi ko, sige po, kaya ka itong talunin. Uh, Tapos, ano nun, para talo pa rin ako. Uh, <laughs> Kasi ano, malaki talaga yung malakas yung katawan ng, ng dad mo eh. Close game lang, siguro po mga 11-9, 11-10, siguro kung until 5, mga 5-4, mga unti lang yung ano. Oh. Tapos pag close na yung ano, wala, di, di ka na siya kaya. <laughs> Ginagawa ba niya, ba, ba niya ang mga medyo rough na play sa'yo o yung, yung hindi naman dirty pero rough lang? Hindi naman masyado, oh. parang gulang. Mm, yun. gulang. <laughs> Ginagulangan niya lang ako kasi yun yung mga gulang, yun yung mga pwede mo rin gawin sa game eh, na mga advantage eh. Kaya yun, ginagulangan niya ako kaya talo ako. <laughs> mga ganun-ganun, mm. mga tira. Oo. Uh -huh. uh, gulang si daddy. Tapos yung mga hindi mo, hindi mo ina-expect mm. na mangyari tapos biglang gagawin pala. <laughs> Gusto ko siya matalo. Pag natalo ko siya, sobrang saya ko na. Kasi hindi ko pa na, hindi ko siya natatalo eh. So, siguro, kung maglaro kami mamaya, matatalo ko na siya. Good, good, good. Mahalaga ang basketball dito sa Pilipinas. At pag mm, nakikita ka ng mga tao, at siyempre, napapansin nila na, wow, you know, ang tangkad niya. Yeah. Inaasahan nila na magaling siya mag-basketball. Dapat, you know, maging professional player lahat. Um, ano mahirap ang buhati ng mga expectations? Para sa akin, hindi naman po. Mm -hmm. Parang sinasab sinasabi lagi sa akin ni Daddy na nandyan lang yan. Parang mm -hmm. gawin mo pa rin is to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, Mag-work ka pa rin kung ano yung ginagawa mo lagi. Parang huwag mo damdamin yung pressure. Kasi minsan hindi rin yan makakatulong sa'yo. Mm -hmm. Kaya sabi niya na, yun, do what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. As I chat with Kai, it's easy to see that he's a bright young man with a down-to-earth attitude that can take him places. He's definitely in good hands playing ball with Dad, who can share the wisdom and experience gained over a long professional career. Ako pag apak palang ng korte, eh, parang magandang pagramdam nato na oh, magkapaglaro na naman ako. Sa pag nagsab na ako, sa na magandang pagramdam yun. Ano pag nakaskor, nakablock. Kahit tumatak mo ka lang, nakikita mo yung mga teammates mo, mga yung depensa. Tsaka yun, masayang pakiramdam, lalo na pag naglaro ka sa court, kahit maglaro ka lang. Sa so, tingin ko, yung passion ng basketball sa akin, nagsimula na agad sa akin, parang boom. <laughs> parang basketball, parang yun nga, siguro nagsimula siya kay daddy, dahil nakita ko. Tapos parang, yun parang 
feeling, parang ang ganda ng basketball, mm. sarap maglaro ng basketball. Gusto kong itry, tumaas yung passion ko para sa laro ng basketball. Yes. We all speak one language, young or old, American or Filipino, our handshake is the game. Writing a book about it didn't necessarily make me an expert, but it definitely made me love basketball more than ever. It's great to come back and get to share these experiences again with old friends and new. But as a writer, I'm always looking to the future, and it's bright. Here's to new stories and hopefully more adventures to come.